Hi everyone and welcome to WCI Consulting's webinar. Uh, today we'll be going over innovative use of input controls on business objects, uh, Webby. And if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to use the right hand panel and uh, go ahead and ask them. Uh, if we have enough time at the end, we'll uh, answer some of them. Uh, as always, if you have any questions about the webinar afterwards, uh, please feel free to email us and uh, let us know. Uh, we're always looking for new topics, so if you have any topics that you think would be uh, interesting that we could address, uh, please feel free to contact us about that as well. Uh, with that being said, let's get started. Uh, I always like to start with our uh, mission statement. Uh, it lets us know, lets you know that where we stand as a company, um, we are looking for long-term partners uh, to work with, and uh, we really believe in our mission statement, and we believe that you know it, it's what separates us from a lot of the other companies out there that you may use for services. Uh, we've been around since 1998. I guess we need to update the uh, 14 years to 15, and uh, we specialize in business objects, uh, especially, but generally business intelligence uh, overall. And uh, we've got our new instantaccessbi.com, uh, basically. You have your fingertips, a business intelligence consultant at a much cheaper rate than having a consultant at all times available to you. Uh, thank you for joining today, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Andrew, and Andrew is going to go through our demonstration. Good, good morning. My name is Andrew. I'm the uh, head of the Office of Innovation here at WCI. I want to just show my screen. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to go over innovative input controls. Um, what we're actually going to show today is how to use input controls in your Webby 4.0 reports so that you can then uh, display information dynamically uh, depending on your different uh, needs uh, to visualize this data. So if you see my screen right here, uh, we have a very simple uh, column chart uh, showing a number of different uh, KPIs broken down by year, and you can see that along the bottom in 2004, and 2005, and 2006. Now on the left hand side, you can see that we've created some input controls on this chart. Um, and so if we switch one of these toggles to say geographic, the same data is now broken down by state, um, and then what we can also do is we can also uh, switch to merchandise as well. And that allows us to do a whole number of uh, different things here as well. Now you can also see by this, uh, by this right hand side right here, we have a linking function that we've linked this chart to a number of different options. So if we come down here to our chart here and we click on accessories, You now see the exact same chart, but we see quantity sold broken down. So this is a new way that you can drill down in 4.0 to display detail level data from a top level standpoint. We clear this filter. We've also set this up for dynamic hiding, and we'll go over how we did that in a minute. But we can go to a number of different visualizations and drill down from there. And we can see the data displayed in a new way. Same thing for our calendars. We now see the quantity sold broken down by month, highlighted by different quarters. This is a great way for you to uh, distribute reports that are unique uh, in their visualizations and so that you can leave one screen as opposed to creating three or four different charts all of a sudden right there. I want to show you one other thing that we can do with this before we go into the actual technical details of doing it. Right here, what I've done is I've created a what if chart. Uh, what this is doing is it's taking sales revenue. And then if we change to a different percentage of our sales, what happens to our estimated revenue? So our sales revenue coming back from our database is in the gold bar. And our estimated revenue can be modified by our input control so that we can do a little bit of what if analysis as well. So what if happens if we increase our sales by 4%? Or 
or decrease it by 12%, what happens to our bottom line? How do, how do those numbers change? And if you can see, we can also hover over these charts and do this as well. Now you might be asking yourself, how do we go about doing this? We'll go into design mode. We'll go back to the first report. Now as you can see, there's two different input controls here. The first thing that we did was, this is right here on the left hand side, this is one chart with the category axis being changed dependent on what the value of this toggle was. So we've moved we've created two different variables. A type toggle, this will be what we'll be using to display our data in our input control. And then we've also created a graph one dimension. So we open this up, we can see our if statement here that's determining what is being shown in this category axis. Now because we've created a static field, <coughs> in our dimension, in our input controls, we edit this right here, we can go to our custom list of values and we can add a number of different options and then use those as our toggling agents throughout it by using dynamic visibility. Now the other thing we've done is we've created an input control via linking. It's called an element link in 4.0. And so you can determine what you want, uh, in this case we're using everything that's in the chart as our input control. And then you can dictate what dependencies that exist. So the report object is graph one dimension, as we mentioned, is going to change. And it's going to apply to the three charts and tables that have been hidden in this report. So if we right click on this chart right here, we can go into format chart, and here is a dynamic vehicle right here. We're saying that you should hide this when the type toggle, which is this input control right here, does not equal calendar or the count of the year is greater than one. That allows our users to drill down in a way that is beneficial to them, as well as helping them target the data. As a report developer, also allows you to maintain the space that is being used. So we swim, uh, clear this filter on block one. You can see this chart goes away. And if we switch to geographic, the chart is still not here, but if we drill down, we can then see that this chart is hidden when the count of the state is greater than one or the type toggle is geographic. And if we switch to merchandise and click on sweat t-shirts, we can then see all of our values here. Now, what we've also done is we've also created a table right here. So maybe we want to see this data, this detailed data all the time without doing this dynamic hiding. So let's copy this table and paste it right next to it. what we can do is we can see that we've used two dimensions here, both the type 1 dimension, which is very similar to what we used before, use, determining using the type toggle to determine what values to show in that table, and then subdimensions as well, which does the same thing. So if we create a table underneath this one chart, what we can do is we then place the columns 
by inserting rows above, grabbing this table one dimension. And let's insert a row below. And let's go ahead and put the sales revenue in this table right here. And so then what we can do is we can change this bottom table right down here. So now it's broken down by months and quarters. And if we switch it to geographic, it breaks it down by city and by the state name. This way, you can still show a detailed level data in a number of different formats from a graph to a table, which allows you to break down your users to visualize what data you can see. Now, because we use a um, essentially a wild card and custom values in our input controls, you can do anything that you want here. If you want to change the display of the chart, so you can show the data either by a column chart or a pie chart, you can do that as well here. By essentially just hiding and unhiding elements that we have by using the dynamic hiding function in all the blocks that are available. So you can use it both as an object or in the dynamic hiding. Now to do our what-if analysis, we did something very similar. If we look at this table right here, we have two different measures. We have sales revenue and estimated revenue over certain days, and we've applied a filter so it's only showing 2006 data. And so what we've done here is we've done two things. We've created a variable that allows us to modify to a, use as the input control. And then we've created the second measure here, which simply takes the revenue modifier, which we are modifying with the input control, dividing it by 100 to give us a percent, and multiplying that by our sales revenue. So when our users use our input control, two things happen. The display changes, because as you can see on the revenue modifier, which was originally 88, it's now using a value of 102. So that's how we get these functions here as well. Now, for what example, if we wanted to, we could also apply a different filter here by clicking on New and choosing City. List of values from our report equal to We're going to apply it to block one here. And so now what we can do is we can change it to a number of different things. As you can see here, the left hand side is here. And because these are dynamic values, we can also use the input control to modify if that, if that's what it is. Now essentially we can also use, because we're limiting the data in this table by city, currently the title reads actual versus estimated revenue for 2006, which we have um, hard coded into this. But we can use the fact that we're using a dynamic value in our input controls to change this formula
And so now when we change this, we can see the value here. The value here changes, which allows us to not create 12 different charts for each one of these items, but by simply using the filters and the info controls that are available to us in 4.0, we're able to do the entire nine yards. Now, we all want to go ahead and use demonstrate how we would do this by, as I mentioned earlier, if we want to change this visualization. What we're going to do is we're going to add a variable. We're just going to call it chart type. And we're going to call this and give it a value of line. So we come into our input controls. Add a new one, chart type. We're going to modify the list of values. And we're going to add um, column chart. We'll just call it column for the sake of ease. Okay. We use finish. Now you'll notice that does not prompt me for a dependency. When you're using these toggles right here, um, it's going to assume that you want to apply that to the entire report. So we're going to copy this chart right here, paste. And as you can see, it, there's a multi-value here because the city input control is not applied to this. We'll go back and fix that in just a minute. And we're going to turn this into a column chart. Now we, this might be an easier way for our users to be able to determine the difference between the estimated revenue and the sales revenue. We go into city now, change the dependencies to both blocks. Okay, and so now you can see both these charts are now showing data only for Chicago. We're going to do a dynamic hiding, hide when. We're going to say when chart type does not equal line. Copy that. We're coming into the column chart and we're going to apply the same thing. We can use chalk column for all values. Come back into the list of values and make sure that line is here as well. And if we change it to line, we see our line chart. And if we see our column, we have our column chart. And if we want to do add both of them, so that the, the user has the option to show both of them at the same time, we can simply say not equal to line. and equal the column.
And since we've chosen all values, we can then show both of these, gra these graphical versions of the data. So that's just a few ways that you can manage your user's experience, as well as giving them a dashboard as field, and provide some interesting ways to maximize the real estate available on the screen for your users as they're examining reports, say in a web portal or something like that. Uh, this has been a big request by a lot of our clients to do this so that they can embed these charts via open doc calls in portals. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Trent and see if we have any questions. Thank you, Andrew. Um, we uh, Let me get this PowerPoint back up. And here you go. Uh, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to email either myself or Andrew. Our, webs, our email's up there. Uh, you probably get our invites for our webinars uh, here um, from me. And um, if you, you know, are in urgent need of anything, please feel free to give us a call at WCI Consulting. Uh, and thank you very much for attending today. Uh, our next webinar is going to be uh, covering widgets within the business objects uh, enterprise. And uh, it should be up on our website now. So take a look at that. And uh, we will see you next time. Thank you all for coming.